Okay guys, let's talk about uh, the propellers on our multi-engine airplane. Uh, we're going to talk about constant speed propellers, the governor, how they work, why they work, how they operate, and how we can control them. As a uh, just a brief reminder, I am not going to go into extreme detail on um, the benefits of the constant speed propeller because I'm kind of assuming if you're flying multi-engine airplanes, you've probably flown uh, some complex single engine airplanes. But um, let's just review really quick. The constant speed propeller has uh, advantages because we dial in the set RPM that we want and the governor will maintain that RPM, whether we climb or descend or, or, or whatever. Uh, why is that advantageous? Well, uh, fuel economy, reduce noise, reduce stress on the engine, all those things. Uh, remember that fine pitch, when we say fine pitch, we're talking about the blade being uh, a small angle of attack to the relative wind. All right, uh, The blade is pretty much flat to the oncoming wind. When we say coarse pitch, we're talking about a, a higher angle of attack um, with the, in regards to the relative wind. Uh, if you want to think of it as bite, coarse pitch, it's taking, the propeller is taking a larger bite out of the air, whereas flat pitch, it's not taking as large of a bite. Um, why is this important? Again, remember that uh, with our fixed pitch propeller, it's set. We, uh, we cannot adjust it in the air. Uh, we can't adjust it on the ground either. Um, although there are ground adjustable propellers, we typically don't see those in single engine aircraft. So flying in a fixed pitch propeller, like your typical I don't know, Cessnas, Pipers, all those basic uh, training aircraft. It's kind of like driving around in third gear on your car, right? Uh, you can get going and you can cruise, uh, you know, down the freeway, but you're really not using your um, engine all that uh, efficiently. So if we introduce the constant speed propeller and uh, we can, where we can change the pitch, now we're really getting into using the whole spectrum of um, our aircraft's engine or using all the gears in the car so to speak. So that said let us start with a description of how we change the pitch in our multi-engine aircraft. All right? um, it's very similar to our single engine if you have gone through those systems before but there is uh, some distinct differences. Um, this uh, schematic. This drawing is particular to the Macaulay propellers. Um, the information comes from Macaulay, and so there are different systems out there. However, um, this one is specific to, uh, in particular, the Beechcraft, uh, the Baron, um, as it comes with the uh, Macaulay propellers. So we're going to start here, and we are going to draw the hub of our aircraft engine propeller system okay this is the end we're looking at the side view here um, inside of this hub we have a diaphragm that separates uh, the oil which oil comes out into here and behind the oil we have a large spring called the return spring I'm going to try to draw a spring here. It won't be very pretty. But we have this spring that goes to a backing plate. Okay, And the spring rests on that backing plate. Connected to this diaphragm, we have uh, actuators and linkages. All right, they come back like this. And this is not exactly, but it's pretty close to what... Uh, we have on the propeller, all right, and here's our propeller, kind of a side view with a twist, goes up like this, and there's a twist, and uh, we have counterweights on the uh, propeller base as well, all right. It's located somewhere on the root down here. So what happens is as we draw this oil line. Okay, Man, that looks great. 
as we interject oil into the hub, this diaphragm is pushed back against the spring. As it does, uh, it changes the pitch of our blades. In a multi-engine aircraft, it is going to change the pitch to a fine pitch. So, more oil equals less pitch. That's the easiest way to remember it. More oil in the hub, less pitch on the propeller. Or, if you want to think of it, more oil equals more RPM, right? Because when we have a flat pitch, or a very fine pitch, we have more RPM. That's our setting for takeoff and for a go-around situation. Remember on uh, base or final, wherever you decide, wherever is recommended by your POH, uh, we put the propeller all the way forward so that in case, excuse me, we have to go around, we have maximum RPM available at the propellers. All right? The return spring here, the return spring counteracts the oil pressure and pushes this diaphragm forward or changes these blades to coarse pitch and, if we so choose, takes it all the way to feather. So let's think about it for a second. We have a multi-engine airplane. We lose oil pressure. Where do we want the blades to go? Do you want them to go to a fine pitch where they're essentially windmilling and have all this uh, relative wind hitting it, creating drag? Or do we want it to go to feather? Well, if you remember, let me see if I can find an old diagram here. Here we go, this will work. We have a failed engine. We don't want all this drag being created here, right? We want it to go to feather. So it's pretty obvious. Um, losing oil pressure, return spring pushes the diaphragm forward, pulls the blades to feather. Okay. Um, that's the difference between a single engine and a, a multi-engine airplane propeller system. In a single engine, if we lose oil pressure, the propeller blades are going to default to a fine pitch um, or to max RPM, right? We got one engine, so let's use whatever oil pressure we have um, while the engine's still running, okay? Multi-engine, not so much goes straight to feather. So hopefully that makes sense there. Now, how do we uh, control this pitch? How do we change the pitch? Uh, how do we get oil pressure up here into the hub? All right, well, that's the governor's job. We're going to draw very vaguely here the governor. Okay, we have a threaded shaft. Here, this is uh, the hidden lines for it. And our control, that goes back to the cockpit. All right, this goes back to our propeller lever, right? We've got a left and right throttle. We have a left and right propeller. And then we have our mixture over here. Okay, so throttle, propeller, mixture. The heart of this governor system is this spring. There is a spring right here. It's called the speeder spring. And what we're doing when we change this lever here, either of these levers, and let me say that each engine, each propeller system has its own governor. So there's one on the left, there's one on the right. When we change our propeller lever, we are screwing or unscrewing this threaded shaft, which is compressing or relaxing this spring. Okay, This spring rests on a plate, like so. I'm going to draw it like this. And under here is our flyweights. Okay, other than the difference up here in multi-engine, uh, this is very similar to a um, single engine. A little difference, but 
pretty close to the same. These fly weights, speed or spring, fly weights are heavier at the top and they pivot down here at the 90 degree angle. So these fly weights are connected to a plate all right, which is spinning make that a little bit neater, which is spinning with the engine. So whatever however fast the engine is spinning, these flyweights are spinning around also. All right. So imagine these weights are spinning. Now, in essence, what's happening is these flyweights are pulling out as the engine goes faster or going in as the engine goes faster. What that does is it lifts this valve down here. Let me draw this valve so we can see what's going on. Again, this will be greatly simplified, but you get the idea. Okay, So this right here is our engine oil in it, it I'm sorry this goes to the to the um, engine sump essentially uh, the oil does not flow that way it flows this way though so anyways it comes down like this this is to our hub so the oil flows into the hub that way flows out of the hub this way Inside of here, we've got diaphragm, piston kind of things. And over here, from our engine uh, supply side there is a compressor and uh, I'm going to draw this not exactly as it sits in um, on the shaft uh, but for uh, ease of understanding purposes I'm going to draw this like this okay these are two gears with teeth okay the reality is this gear is connected to this shaft and uh, we would be looking at the side of it like however you draw gears on the side like this all right so something like that but just ignore that so oil flows through this compressor it cannot go around on the sides so it's compressed, accelerated, and under high pressure uh, comes into what we call the pilot valve. All right. So what happens is the flyweights are spinning with uh, the engine uh, at a particular RPM. And as we enter, let's say we go into a dive where the propeller picks up speed and our RPMs accelerate. Well, as the shaft picks up speed, these weights are going to be pulled out by centrifugal force. What does that do? Through centrifugal force and uh, being connected to this diaphragm, to this uh, valve here, the weights are going, or the fly weights are going to pull out, pulling this valve up. Okay? So, you can see that if I was to draw this over here, our valve would now be in this position here. All right. In this position here, this spring is going to push against the diaphragm, which is going to push this oil back the return line. It's going to flow back out here and exit the hub. All right, so it comes out. In reality, it goes down through this shaft here, and it goes back to the sump. 
okay, where it can be recycled. What does that do? Remember, as we lose oil pressure up here and the spring is dominant, it pulls our propellers to a fine pitch. All right. Um, I'm sorry, to a coarse pitch. So the blades are going to coarsen or have a higher angle of attack. And when the, the RPM is, uh, when the centrifugal force, I should say, is equal to this spring tension that we set, the flyweights will fall back in. This pilot valve comes down and closes and the supply of oil stops. The blades remain in that position. Okay. Now, what happens if we enter a climb and we start loading up the propeller and our RPM drops? Well, as you can probably imagine, having pivots here, the flyweights fall in. What does that do? As these weights go in, the spring pushes down and opens up uh, the valve here. All right. So as the valve goes down, let me draw it over here. As the valve is now below, right? This high pressure oil enters the pilot valve here, it flows to the hub where it enters the hub. The increased oil pressure pushes back on this spring. As it pushes back on the spring, more oil, more RPM. Okay, So it allows the blades to increase, the RPM increases, and then once the flyweights achieve uh, equal, equal tension on the spring, I guess we'll say, um, the flyweights come back to 90 degrees, the entire uh, force and counterforce is equal, the valve uh, closes back down and maintains the desired speed. So we can control the, the key is we control the tension of this spring by either making it tighter or, or uh, less tight. All right, and that's essentially how the propeller blades are moved in a multi-engine aircraft. And remember as the, the main difference being, if we lose oil pressure anywhere along here, this is going to default to uh, the feathered position. The spring is going to overcome the oil pressure and move our propeller blades to feather, which is what we want because we want to reduce as much drag as possible. Hope that helps. Any questions, leave me a comment, uh, a no, an email, and uh, good luck.